Tilo, what's poppin'? <coughs> we are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like and comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, this is twitch.com. That's the username. If you wanna, uh, if you miss a live and you wanna replay it, psh, go ahead and replay it, man. Um, I should be live tonight. We're going to figure it out. Don't forget, we do got merch. My bad, man. We do got merch. Yeah, get me. We also got Patreon, which I am locked out of right now. So if you're looking for me on Patreon, I'm locked out of it until support gets back to me. I'm still recording, though, so I got two videos for it as soon as they unlock it. <coughs> But anyway, Police Interceptor, Season 22, Episode 16. Let's get into it. <coughs> it's close to midnight. Dang. And in the southwestern suburbs, something sinister's lurking in the dark. What's sinister? It's so bad. I'm reading a book? Sinister lurking in the dark? What is this, Harry Potter? And Interceptor Gav Hall is riding solo in the unmarked. Hunting down a suspect motor. Foggy. Advanced driver Gab's personal philosophy revolves around the three F's. Football, fitness and the force. Big van. The Ford Transit he's currently looking for is suspected of being involved in a burglary earlier in the evening. A, a van trying to smash into a business premise. There was one earlier tonight. It's probably going to be the same one. An attempted burglary? You tried to smash it and couldn't? Like, what happened? Like, and then you still rode around in the van? Ain't it like tow up? It's easy to spot. The team's on high alert because it's been reported that a vehicle was stolen in one of the earlier incidents. Apparently, they're still present. And just meters up ahead. There it is, and a vehicle. A like transit a followed a by a white car goes cruising past as a fair old lick. Gav falls in. Maybe behind the two vehicles at speed, actually. A van and a small white car. They're picking up speed, they ain't got VRMs. Sergeant Neil isn't too far behind. I'm not even gonna lie, it don't even be looking like y'all be trying to get away. Like, y'all be running right into these It's boats. left, left. Because Gab's in the unmarked, the suspects don't know they're being tailed. It's slowing me down from the van. The van's now overtaking another vehicle. And now Gab's having second thoughts. Not sure these are involved. Uh, they're coming to a natural. As the motor pulls over, Sergeant Neil rocks up, blazing the blues, which changes everything. Well, yeah, they are. Both failing to stop NH. Stand by. That's First lights on. Up ahead, Neil goes for the box. Yeah, they've uh, rammed the way out. Slight contact with Neil. Neil, take uh, comms, please. The white car boots it, disappearing into the night. Y'all have made slight contact is over with. They're never going to stop chasing you. And once you touch the police cars, they're not going to stop chasing you. You can touch their babies. But with two interceptors on his tail, Batman knows the game's up. Yeah, you're done. Why are you looking? Get out! Kill on the floor! No! Put your hands behind your back, you More in there. That apology means absolutely nothing. It's too late. They might beat you up. <laughs> no, no, no more. Right. Sorry. You're under arrest, mate. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Just give an update. 6-6 six, six, quickly, driver of van detained. Uh, concentrate on the other vehicle, please. The slick strike from Gavin Neal has left the driver dazed and confused. Uh, you don't have to say anything, confused. but it may arm defence if you don't mention one question. Something which later on in court, anything you do say may be given evidence. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. A hammer's just fallen from his pocket. All right, stand up. All right, stand on that. Hotel's dangerous, aren't you? Not enough. Sorry. Yeah, not sorry's not good enough, mate. No, 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 no. What you've done. It's a good start. The lad in the Let's white car sorry. remains at large. Yeah, we'll let uh, we'll turn around. 
Interceptors Maka and Dan are on the case. Well, I wonder if we're gonna pull out the chopper. We ain't pulled out the helicopter in a little bit. Case. It's gone that way, hasn't it? Yeah. Word comes in from a Derbyshire ARV unit that the white car has crossed county lines. That means nothing. But the status of the pursuit remains unclear. Until the boys spot something up ahead. We're with the uh, crawler in Derbyshire. I already caught him. The driver lies injured on the pavement in Derbyshire. I've never noticed they had these type of seats in their car. Little bucket seats. They look like they real race cars in this one. The driver lies injured on the pavement. Fake news. And now cops face a different kind of emergency. What's your name? The you look fat down there. What are you doing? Faking a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> He's got um, we <coughs> can we have a RV with a kit. My bad, that's not funny. Yes, it is. In my opinion. They've uh, rammed the way out. Slight contact with Neil. In a suburb of Nottingham, a lightning fast strike on a Ford Transit by Gavin no. Neil. No. Kill on the floor, no. <laughs> Put your hands behind your back. Resulted in one in cuffs. Sorry. You're under arrest, mate. Yeah, sorry, sorry. While his That's mate, a, sorry made indeed. off in a white car, got picked up by a Derbyshire armed response unit. One wound, two male on the floor. The injured driver is now in desperate need of medical attention. Derbyshire cops are doing first aid on him now. Like, what happened? Like? They've got him out of the car, but he's also got a wound to his stomach. It's not ascertained as to how that has happened yet. Interceptors are first aid trained and carry kits with them at all times. Yes, What's your first name, pal? Yes, breathing. Currently receiving first aid on the floor. Mail's not giving his surname at the moment with us. No further detail. It's oh, still unclear baby. how the man got his. I think she got the pool. Is that wounds? Is that Lisa? I know that ain't Lisa with the pipe on her like this. So if that if this is Lisa, it makes sense why she don't do nothing. She's the shooter. Don't call Lisa unless you got a problem where you need to blick up up. You know what I'm saying? It's still Lisa? unclear how the man got his wounds. But thanks to the first aid he's received at the scene, he's finally stable. Breathing all right? Ambulance is three minutes away, mate. If I was dude, I'd be like, he tried to rob me. Oh, Hit me with a hammer. With the ambulance en route, Dan satisfied the drivers in safe hands. But was that Lisa with the blick or not? Meanwhile, the driver of the transit, despite a catalogue of potential offences, seems baffled by his arrest. What am I locked up for now? What are you locked up for? Dangerous driving, failing to stop. Attempted burglary or burglary, I don't quite, it is a burglary, burglary at a business premise around the corner. You tell me you're probably banned, so I'll just go and tell you that you're under arrest for danger, uh, disqualified driving and go and equip to steal because you've got ammo on you. Oh boy, you got like seven, eight charges. What you mean? You know what you're there for? Okay. A healthy rap sheet indeed. Anything else? Suspicion of theft to this. What, the van? Yeah. Oh, you're also under arrest and suspicion of theft of this van as well, which remember you're under caution. Let's hope someone's keeping count. You also arrest for wearing a sweater, a hoodie with no t-shirt under it. Thanks, mate, for coming. We know you up to no good when you dress like that. When you put it on a hoodie and you ain't got no t-shirt underneath it, ain't nothing positive coming out of your day. It's all negativity. Yeah. With the man's taxi having arrived, he safely bundled off to the Nick. Now, Macca and Dan have arrived to fill the boys in on what went down with the driver of the Toyota. <coughs> this episode crispy? This 1080? Okay. Mate, he's in a bad way, that lad. Is it? He's got, he's that injured that he's just stopped the car during the pursuit, right. got out and just stumbled towards the cops. The interceptors reckon the lad could have got his injuries during the raid earlier on. It's a stolen van. Luckily for me, Neil's been with me. 
this van driver here has rammed Neil. So he's been arrested for his driving. Derbyshire police have managed to get that car and an offender in it. Derbyshire police. Imagine if I had no facial hair. Like, bald and no facial hair is crazy. But, like, he's in shape, so he can do it. But, like, I'm kind of in shape now. I'm losing a lot of weight, but I was sick. I lost even more weight, so. But, like, this dude, I guess he can do it. I can't I can't even imagine. He's managed to get that car and an offense. Well, he looked like a mole rat, a naked mole rat. That's crazy. Doing it. Inside that van, there are a load of, load of car keys, which we suspect are from stolen vehicles. So there's a lot of inquiries to be done, but in terms of um, the, you know, the evidence we managed to gather so quickly, it, it's, it's a great job. Obviously, everything we do, unlike these people, we have to risk assess, um, and all our decision-making is ratified by people in the control room. So the information is constantly <coughs> fed in, and we're making some very, very quick decisions, and the job's gone textbook. A few hours later, What's police that, the visited gate? the scene oh, of the ram the raid where multiple car keys were found to have been taken. The van driver was convicted of burglary, going equipped and driving whilst mm, disqualified he and seven without years insurance. Easily. He was disqualified for four years and sent to prison for 28 months. No further action was taken Tattoo against him years? for dangerous driving or theft of a motor vehicle. The Toyota driver pleaded guilty to dangerous driving and he awaits sentencing. This is the UK judicial system, man. Two years is life. Your shoe, we'll get your shoes. On Crime's front line. Yo, turn your camera off, bro, before oh, I spit on you. There's not. Bro, you have, you're not going to do anything. They got you hemmed up. Much worse than the threat of getting a gobful. They can literally pick you up like a briefcase. Don't you spit? But there's a nifty bit of gear that can help stop a wrong un from blowing his top. Y'all gonna put the mask on him? Spit oh, it. Spit it. Spit it. Spit it. Spit it. Spit it. Stop struggling and calm it down. Everybody's scared of you, pal. Put your little hood on. The wow. introduction of the spit hood as a piece of kit for us to be using, um, it, it's, it's a brilliant bit of kit. If that person's gonna make the decision to start spitting at people, then we need to have a, a, a method of controlling that. I'm not going to stand with my hand. Spitting on somebody is disgusting. And over their mouth because then that opens up a, a whole new raft of issues. Very disrespectful. We've got a spit hood. Use the spit hood. If they want to then keep spitting, they can spit all over their own face. Definitely use one. Saturday night in Nottingham. It's a busy night. Snap is. Especially for the cops. Rob and Spence are racing to intercept a black 3 Series Beamer. I swear I thought he was about to say something, a black something else. I was like, what you, hold on now. But then he said 3 Series and I was like, got it. Orders <laughs> saying that the driver of this car is uh, <coughs> is in drink uh, from the AMPR hit. It's like it's uh, heading home. The driver is also disqualified uh, and he's wanted. That AMPR is dangerous. This curry-loving copper joined the force to lock up the bad guys, and the bloke thereafter tonight is wanted on suspicion of GBH. Dream car, Lamborghini Murcielago. Keep dreaming, buddy. He'll know that he's wanted. He's one of these characters that will know, knows that he's no up to no good, and knowing that he's, he'll know that he's disqualified, and he'll, he'll do everything he can to get away. So it'd be a really good one to drop behind and get. Him. Actually, how much does a police interceptor make a year? He might could get it. Blocked up for it and uh, hopefully get him disqualified for a bit longer. Local units have headed to near the suspect's house. I don't know, I might just get him as he's parking up. Left to think. The blokes failed to stop in the past. That's the car there, lights are on lot. Yeah, I already, not tonight. I already got him. I haven't got him. You sound disappointed that there's no chase. <laughs> Rob follows the noise. Hey, you got me on camera? Hey, you got me on camera? Well, was have you, have, have you got me on camera? Oh, no. well, to your Listen, have you, yeah? With your camera, you little knob. Calm yourself hey. down. Tell me right. Put him on the floor, get him on the floor. 
Right. Right. Chill. Don't be aggressive like that. Calm yourself. Chill. Calm yourself. Tell me. You're under arrest. On chill. So you didn't have to. So like putting people on the ground is like just a power move, just to show them who's in charge. Hey, Mr. Mr. Sue, Mr. Mr. Chill, chill, chill. Anything you do, chill out. The bloke's kicking off, but quickly in cuffs. Rob needs to wrestle back control of the situation. Was that kind of aggressive? Listen, no, 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 you, no, you listen. No, you listen. You are under arrest. You wanted for it. Whatever you say now is just said. Is just said. You need to relax. Let go of my head or I'm going to relax. You need to start Listen. relaxing. No, 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 no. You need to remember who's in charge here and it ain't you. I am. You're not me. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. You're under arrest for driving whilst disqualified, OK? Yeah, He's proving a real handful. To me. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what's happening. Are you oh, listening to me? Yeah. Are you li The hawk is right there. Listening to me. I'm going to tell you what's yeah. happening. Let go of my head. Why is there so many officers with pistols today? What's going on? This is the pistol toter episode. Hey! Let go! If you calm down, we're we'll all Let go! The suspect's been cuffed to the front. Spence? Yeah. Come round right for this lady here. No. But due to his aggression, needs restraining to the rear. Spence, you take... Don't take hold of this other arm. You keep hold of him. Yeah. You release the cuff. He's resisting, so it's proving tricky. You hurt him, and if you hurt me arms, yeah. Right. You chill out, mate. Listen, you hurt him. He's taking it. I'm not gonna lie. He looked like he about to spit on you. Where's the hood? Dislike to Spence and seems to be loading up with snot. All that is pulling out. I'm not pulling. Yes, yeah, not on his lip. Y'all see? Loading that? up with snot. All that is. Pulling out. Ugh. Y'all seen it? Benson seems to be loading up with snot. All that is pulling out. Look, it's on his mustache. You're too grown for that. Now everybody done seen it on national TV and on the reaction. You're disgusting, my boy. I'm not pulling new here, bro. Look at you. You're not going like that. Look at you, bro. Don't start winding up. Finally, his hands are where they belong. Save me up! Yeah, it's in. It's in. Ah! Double lock. Locked. Um, Restrained, yeah. he resorts to a different mode of attack. I'm gonna spit on you. Right. Hey, you got spit on? Let's go. Oh. Oh, Get spit on then. Spitting at an emergency worker is classed as assault, and the act could potentially transmit a range of infectious. Yeah, don't do that. <sighs> You think it's like innocent, but like it's disrespectful when it's like you and a civilian. But when it's you and a cop, it's also disrespectful. But you're gonna get an assault charge. It's an assault with a civilian, but when you do it to a cop, assaulting a cop, you're out of there. Diseases. <coughs> you don't get to speak like that, mate, and then pull it. Now he's crying. Thank you. Don't start this crying now. A breathable mesh spit hood will protect the cops. <laughs> Game over. You got this man out here looking crazy. Get in there. Get in there. Come on. Come on. Yep. Yep. Are you pushing me down? He will not. He'll have nobody, mate. He'll have nobody. I'll have you. Okay? Be clear about that. He gotta be on cocaine. Bro sniffed the whole eight ball. He out here moving incredible hawkish. Like, he is strong. He did an eight ball and he did a, a fifth of, a, of gin or something. What's going on? Despite the suspect behaving more like a caged animal, Spence keeps his cool. You can't Nothing even do no test. You need to chill out. No one's letting go of you till you chill out. Right. Ready? Yeah. You don't This is one menace. They're delighted to get into the traps. We're all good. We can do a blood you test You remember on, that bro. he's wanted. Knows he's qualified. He'll be really annoyed. I think that, you know, cops have got him. Got him banged to rights by the sounds of things. And that will just fuel him, you know. He will be on the run. 
Nah, what fueled him was that cocktail of gin and, and class A's. 88's being caught. Uh, so when he finally gets caught, his reaction is animalistic, as you've probably seen. You know, he just lashes out. And then when we take control, let him know who's boss, the waterworks start, you know. And he goes through all these different tactics, if you like, to try and get his own way and ultimately try and keep a, a level of control over us. And it's our job to remain professional and let him know who's in charge. And, well, he knows that now, doesn't he? And it's off for a night in the cells for him and no doubt facing quite a few charges. So, good job. Have some fun with him. I would not want him anywhere near a car. <laughs> As long as he ain't spit on y'all, he ain't hit the charges ain't that bad. I ain't even gonna lie. Or near a van, it seems. <laughs> Who's driving the van? Dan. Just get going. <coughs> Just get going. Oh boy, them class A's. The bloke might have majorly kicked off. <laughs> You need to remember who's in charge here, and it ain't you. I am. Calm yourself, Jill. But Rob and Spence are grateful at least they didn't get spat on. Jill. I'm gonna spit on you. Right. They got spit on. Yeah. I'd rather get punched in the face than get spat out, if I'm honest with you. Me too. Have we got the keys? Uh, for the car? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Has looked in the car? No. I'll, uh, I'll do a quick search. Okie doke. There's something on the front dash. I don't know what's in it. Right. A surge of his car reveals some cannabis. Oh dear. Whew. And also something a bit more unexpected. You think he's been to Goose Fair tonight, look? There's one big at Goose Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only thing he's won tonight. Well, I suppose he's won a, uh, a night at Her Majesty's, hasn't he? Uh, no, not Her Majesty's, sorry. His Majesty's. His Majesty's, yeah. A nasty. Oh, this is a recent episode, because His Majesty... Okay. Dangerous man off the streets for another night. And I'd like to think, given the offences, <laughs> he might even do a bit of time for this. So, good job. Good job. Doubtful. No action was taken against the man for GBH. Disqual Told you. Qualified driving or the cannabis found in the car. No action for those whole three charges. It's crazy. However, he was found guilty of driving without a license or insurance, assaulting an officer and failing to provide a specimen. He was disqualified from driving for 17 months, given a community order. No time, no. And sentenced to 20 days of rehabilitation <coughs> activity. He was also ordered to pay almost 200 pounds in costs. As long as that spit did not come out of his mouth and onto an officer, I knew he wasn't getting no time. Stays they didn't, they didn't gave him favors. Serious incident. There we are. There, there we are. There, there we are. With serious incidents involving knives having risen by almost 50% in just a decade, cops are having to clamp down hard. He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Nottinghamshire's dedicated knife crime team have taken hundreds of weapons off the streets. I thought it was a lot nicer to start with, but it's not. It's a hunting style knife. Serrated. But the coppers here know it's a constant battle to keep their streets safe. These are designed for warning, warning, warning early, and that's putting the fear of God into war, I think. If you feel that you need to carry a knife, you know, where are you going, who you're hanging out with, what kind of business are you conducting that you, you need that level of protection? You gotta understand, officer, that <laughs> the streets are unforgiving. Mistaken identity is a crazy thing, and I'd rather be caught with it than what than D E A D without it. So. And that's the problem, isn't it? You know, if it's gang related and you need to carry a knife to protect yourself from other and gangs. That's from a civilian standpoint. Well, they're equally tooled up with similar weapons, and too many young people, some children, certainly you know teenagers, losing lives, end up with a horrendous scarring and life-altering injuries because of, in a lot of cases, petty drugs you know, battles or territorial battles over, over drug dealing. Now, it's, it's, you've got to question lifestyle choices. Yeah, it's a 
Nottinghamshire's inner city suburbs provide a fruitful hunting ground for the force's tenacious nice. night crime team. Um, it's that grey silver golf that came past us, 70 plate. Today, Ken and Matt have units all over the neighbourhood, looking for a car suspected of involvement in drug dealing. Ten four. Uh, so it's not gone Radford Road outbound. I'll commit towards Alpherton Road. When it comes to food, Ken's a man for classic combinations. A thin crust pizza washed down with a glass of Italian red. And on the street, he knows that drugs and knives go together like spaghetti and meatball. Do the UK... That was the corniest line. Okay, anyway, does the UK have good pizza? I mean, there's not that many turn-offs it could have had. I the golf it. he's after today has just been spotted by another unit nearby. He's going to try and distance himself from the car. He's turning around. It's uh, only one up now. Well, there's only one front seat uh, occupant. A passenger has reportedly just hopped out of the golf. Yeah, he's walking away. Someone's walking away from it. And he's wandered right into the path of another cop car. <laughs> The lads legged it down an alleyway. Well, got up out of there. Let me out. Let me out. For Matt, it's a case of right place, right time. Up to his taste to stay there. He already got the. He already. The knife gone. The lads calm and compliant. Get him in cuffs, look. The car's leaving. I'm going to go after the car. So attention turns to his mate. Let go of that. Runners detained. We're just getting to the car now. In a stroke of... He should have dashed the phone too. Remarkably good fortune. The golf's attempted getaway has been thwarted by a large lorry. Open that door now or you'll lose the door. Open it now. Open the door! Ken's got a little hammer. He's panicking. Yeah. The threat of which has the desired effect. Cuffs on hands now. You've got cuffs. Give me your hands now. Stop panicking. Give me your hands. And it's job done. Two detained. I ain't gonna lie, they look mighty guilty. <laughs> I ain't even trying to judge a book by his cover, but they he ran. He guilty of whatever they're charging. Got whatever they grand think. on him. At the minute, I haven't found anything else. That's my push. The passengers got a large quantity of cash, but Matt can't find anything sinister today. Can you take this cost off for Not at the minute, no, because he's still being detained. Yeah, bro, it ain't that easy. They finna go follow where you ran at. So all eyes are now on the Golf and its driver. Driver's shot straight out, been blocked. I don't think if he was, if he wasn't blocked. I think it'd have been gone, and we'd end up having a pursuit, which can only really mean one thing: they've got something. That's hearsay. I mean, he do got a Rolex on. But I think if that that lorry hadn't been there, that would have been a failed stop in this part. Probation worker looking at me like, how do you afford that shit on your wrist? <laughs> Every day of the week. Cops are sure the lad's got something to hide, but what and where it is remains a mystery. Don't be surprised if there's a knife somewhere. Meanwhile, Joe and Adam have been searching the drive. I hope they're smart. Man, yeah, be smart. Uh. Sarge P. Wicks, he's got a low down his back. Uh, received. The driver's got suspected Class A's on him. And as for the motor, H. jackpot. Got the hell anything, but now I'm defensively not meant to make questions. So, if it's let a line of court and anything you do say, maybe give them that. Should understand that? Both lads are now under arrest. But for them, a miserable turn of events that's probably put a real dampener on their day. Oh, wow! It's coming down now. But for the cops, it's shaping up to be a scorcher of a job. And it's not over yet. Strip search. My boy got on no shoes and it's raining. That's tough. The Nick, both lads are giving a more thorough search. His pockets are clean, 
But Ken's not giving up yet. Two mobile phones, the smartphone, which is typical of day to day. He's got 13 missed calls since we've been here, so someone's desperately trying to get hold of him. Now it's just a case of trying to get what we can and, you know, with the time available to us. The well, he got that stuff inside of him. <laughs> Is he wasn't. He knew how to stuff that. He ain't going. He said, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna put this in me." I'm too far away from his home address, so it won't be long until someone's told his uh, his relatives what's happened. And if there's anything in the address, there's always that risk it's gonna go. The team want to search the passengers' home. Sharpish. Adam, what we got? Well, they first, are something else has been found lurking in the driver's pants. Oh, it's probably about a grand's worth of drugs as expected from the driver. What was it? Um, we've got a large uh, bundle of what I have no doubt is going to be Class A drugs and you're looking at heroin and crack cocaine. And I would be surprised if there isn't anything less than 150 individual wraps of Class A drugs in there. From the driver, we've also <coughs> located a number of... That's my whole thing, man. Why carry more than you need, man? Yeah, it's long to go back and forth, but it protects you as a trapper. Mm -hmm. phones that are typical for drug dealing, burner style phones, some more cash um, and things like that. It's a great result, but the team have unfinished business. So it's time to roll back out onto the street. Pulling out to your so we've got two people in custody. We're looking at two addresses to search. The first one being a stone's throw away from where uh, all this chaos has kind of happened. So this is the home address of the passenger. We're looking for drugs, we're looking for weapons, we're looking for cash. Looking for anything that kind of assists the investigation in regards to drug supply and possession of criminal property. Because right now the passenger is clear and free. When they get there, it looks like no one's home. But having acquired a key, the team gets hunting. Rule number two: one and two don't get high on supply. And number two: don't keep the work at your crib. See if there's anything hidden inside the shoes and then stuffed. Right down near the toe is a bag, which is going to be suspected. Class A, some sort of powdery substance. Obviously, I'm not going to open it. Overall, police find a significant haul in the house. Around 300 wraps of Class A's worth thousands of pounds. Envelope here, this here. But that's not the half of it. Mm. Hunting knife, survivor knife, it says on it. It's just a very horrible. Wow, he got that thing. Knife that. Who's at home? Nobody in the UK has a use for, a need for at all. Drug dealers carry these weapons, they have to protect what they've got. They need to protect themselves from being robbed. Obviously, we've got rival gangs trying to rob them, trying to take their turf. So that, that's what they're used for, and it's shocking. Shocking, and yet sadly an all too familiar story. It's gone from like a good job to a cracking job now. On the driver of the vehicle, we found sort of a golf, a golf ball type size ball of wraps. Um, and then in the address, we found um, significantly more than that. I would hazard a guess two, three hundred wraps all prepped up as lights and darks in the Rizzler's light the style that we would normally find. And then we found some bulk bags as well, which are, I'm going to guess are going to be probably about half an ounce each. Um, one looks a bit bigger, but that yeah, looks like with, um, cocaine that's yet to be um, made into crack cocaine. I mean, that, that's a large amount of drugs. You're talking thousands and thousands of pounds worth of drugs there. So for us, that's, that's as good as it gets, really. Later that afternoon, police searched the home of the driver, where they found more cash and another large blade. Both the weapons were seized. What's the charge? The drugs were later analysed. Both the weapons were seized. There was a slit down the middle of that. That's crazy. The drugs were later analysed and found to be a combination of cocaine and heroin. Both men were arrested for possession of Class A's with intent to supply and possession. Yeah, buddy, y'all out of there. Y'all each get at least five, right? Possession of criminal I'm property. The investigation is ongoing. Yes, it's drug. I feel like when they say the investigation is ongoing, maybe they're willing to give up a big fish to get less time to two people. 
Oh, no. We're the knife crime team, but the amount of times where we, we start well with seen, one but... and find the other uh, is just really, really frequent, you know. So it makes sense for us to go after both when they're hand in hand. For the interceptors, only three things in life are absolutely certain. Don't do anything silly. Death, oh, taxes. I wouldn't even drive in the way, dog. And dealing with drunks on the weekend night shift. Drunk people are the most frustrating people on the Oh, here we go, man. They waited till 30, 30 minutes in to give us Lisa. Here we go, Lisa. What you talking about? Let me rewind it. Drunk people are the most frustrating people on the planet. You can't get through to him. They shout in your face. They spit whatever's left in the mouth all over you while they're talking to you. A conversation that might take two minutes with somebody who's sober, you know, sometimes when you speak to somebody who's drunk, uh, you know, that conversation will take 10, 15 minutes and, you know, the radio will be going, there'll be jobs coming in elsewhere. But it's a solid point, Lisa. OK, we're on to a good start You've today. been drawn into this engagement with this drunk person mm. uh, and it just, you know, takes you away from... Yeah, real, uh, real matters, really. I think if we could show every drunk person a video of themselves when they're sober, they'd be mortified. <laughs> There's nothing worse than being around drunk people when you're not drunk. That's a fact. I had to learn that the hard way. I tried to go outside one day and I wasn't drunk and everybody around me was drunk. I was, man, I'm trying to go home. This don't even hit when you're sober. Like, I got to go. Five two, we're not that far. It's Saturday night. Male in. That's, that's it, huh? Lisa was on this mug for one minute. Did nothing. Shop shouting. Made two and good off. points. Caller thinks he's drunk. Rob and Spencer from the firearms team are en route to a job in the southwest of the city. So we've had a call from the uh, filling station just here. It looks like they've got someone gone into the shop. Shouting and kicking off, uh, apparently in drink. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go and see what his problem is. Reports suggest the man is now refusing to leave the area. Stay six. And as they arrive at the petrol station, so too do interceptors Mikey and Ian, who immediately clock someone loitering nearby. What magic bomb? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It could around. be the chap they're after. So Rob goes for a quick word with the shop assistant. Hello, mate. Has he gone? Uh, Mike, and it is that fella you've got there, apparently. The one with grey hair, other than being an idiot, has he done anything particularly wrong? Has he, has he committed any crime? The shopkeeper says he felt intimidated by the man's behaviour so sought refuge in the back office. He's not punched anybody. No, 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 so we're good. All he wants is... For, oh, man, you ran from him? I guess, man, de-escalate, I guess. ...for the man to go so he can <coughs> get back to his shift in peace. We'll get rid of him. The bloke's not been violent, but he has been making a complete nuisance of himself. All the boys have to do now is get him to go home. Don't understand what you're saying, mate. Which could be easier said than done. Do you want to arrest me? Arrest me. No, 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 look, look, look. Mate, don't talk to no, me. No, 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 please. Don't please. swear at me. Don't, like don't, me. don't swear at I me. Don't want to do, mate. Don't, don't do swear at me. No, I'll swear if you want to swear. No, no, yeah. no, no, you won't. Hold You're on. in a public... Not in the UK, man. That's a charge. I had to learn that, like, last year. You can't curse in public. That's tough. Please. Wrong, yeah. You have done something wrong. You've been intimidating them. You've been shouting at them. You've been, I don't want to have to arrest you. I'm sure you understand. It's Saturday night and we've got better things to be doing. Do you not think? The bloke insists he's done nothing wrong and is refusing to budge. Around the corner, we've been called here. Please, pardon. We've been called here, haven't we? Because of your behaviour. Just, just go home. Just That's absolutely You're too old for this. Like, you, you didn't do nothing. You want to be in trouble so bad. Just go home. Just go home. Having frightened the shop staff, he's turned his focus on the cops. 
but playground insults will never derail an interceptor. You need to walk home. Oh, rest me down. Excuse me. Three homers or something? Excuse, Excuse me. Walk away. Excuse me. What's your name? What's your name? Five of you here. What's your you, Please five. You can... What's your name? What have I done wrong? What's your name? What's your first name? Spencer. What's your first name? Right, I'm not going to keep telling you. What's your name? What does it matter, is it? Right. Well, how old are you? Does it matter how old are you, yeah. sir? 60. I'm 43. But you're arguing well, like a child. We just want you to go away. I've done wrong nothing. I'm ready to go in myself. Right. Please spend a significant amount of time go home, man. dealing with drink related incidents. And now, fueled by booze, this fella's getting shirty. Rob must take control. Wait, just just walk away, go home, and let's end the night here, shall we? So we can continue going, doing what we need to do, and you can enjoy the rest of your night. Sorry, sir. What's, what's your first name? I'm not. I'm not getting into it. Just don't come close to me. Okay, that's salt. No, it's not. Keep you back from me. Don't start getting close to me. Don't get in my personal salt. space. Hey, Rob, it's something wrong with Rob. Low key, I understand. But, like, this is the second time he did something iffy to me. Rob Wilding a little bit. You touch him a lot, I so. Yep, don't give him a personal don't space. The situation is... He got a point, but he could have did something different. Like, he'd be escalating a little bit. A knife edge. And the bloke's got Rob in his crosshairs. Yeah. What's the issue here? You're this, I just want you to go home. Yeah, I want to go home. Are you going to go? Yes, I'm going to go. Right, then get moving. Yeah? After a tense 10 minutes. Good. The standoff is finally over. See ya. Ta da. But it looks like the entertainment is just getting going. Rob, a wild boy. Is he still giving us all? The Elvis has left the building. <laughs> Hopefully, the king's heading back to Graceland to sleep it off because Rob reckons he's lucky not to be off to the jailhouse. Seriously, because they did give him every chance they could to settle down. Truth be told, if it wasn't the time it is on a Saturday night, I think I'd locked him up five minutes ago, but there's bigger fish to fry tonight. We're a relatively small team responsible for firearms <laughs> jobs across the whole county. We do not want to be getting tied up with a wally like that that just <laughs> He just needs to go home. It's a classic I think case of just a few too many beers, key. isn't it? Hands behind your back. Still to come. Back. It's dinner time on a Wednesday. And interceptors Gav and Dan are looking for something to sink their teeth into. <coughs> What's that? Off the bike behind us. A motorbike's just whistled past Gav's right ear along the pavement. He's not even aware of us, is he? The boys are in the unmarked 3 Series, so the bikers are oblivious. Yeah, pay attention to your surroundings. Why use the pavement when you can just use the road? Not only that, he's got no lights on and no helmet either. Hopefully he's going out <laughs> and he comes to a natural somewhere. Yeah, because if he is... Do you not think he's got to us? Don't think so, mate. Dan's only other job before joining the force was in a local supermarket. He's gone from shell stacker to crime cracker. See what I'm talking about? This is what I be talking about. Don't I always say it? Supermarket employees, GameStop employees, ask the workers. Like, here you go. And top of his shopping list tonight is a dodgy biker. There he is. The bike's pulled over at a junction up ahead. The rider's dismounted and Dan's ready to pounce. With his mates. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the lads finally clocked them. We'll get him here, mate. He's not going to be able to get onto that, is he? Yeah, that's get on the floor. Stay back. Get, get back. back off. Back Stay off. back. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. You stay back now. Don't get involved and stay back, pal. The red dots yeah, have got them tasers drawn. Dan's taser have worked wonders. Oh. And bought Gav some time to quiz Biker Boy. Taser hurt a little bit. Right. You're detained because you're riding on that bike on pavements, no lights on. You're gonna get a search under section one of pace for stolen or prohibited articles. 
I'm PC Gavo from Knott's Police Headquarters. Detained for that search, you get a copy of the search record. Do you understand? Hello, Dad! You understand? I've been arrested. Right. To add to the lad's woes, his dad's popped out to see what's going on. How old you shouldn't have? No, he was right at home. 17. Right. I've got me Whose bike is it? Hmm? Whose bike is it? I just don't know. Right. No, it's not stolen or all like that. Okay. Is that your dad there? Yeah. You want to tell him what's going off? I've been arrested. You haven't been out that most like, you? He has, pal. Yeah. Oh, you... On, pa on pavements, no lights on, all over the shop. You... No. Wise words from Dad. Did he have Unfortunately, the lad's mate isn't quite so sensible. Will you do no. me a favour, mate? We just back off for him. Yeah, me? he just wanted to get involved, didn't he? No matter how many times he's told... Why, why his friend got on that tight track suit trying to get this clothes? What? Back up a little bit. You smothering the police officers along with yourself with that tightness. The message just doesn't sink in. Arrest them. So just you leave me, because I'm going to nick you for public order. All right. So you've sworn at me twice, all on the camera, <laughs> so crack on, mate, because you're going to get nicked. And he's now got a special message for our camera crew. It's the final straw. I'm just behind your back. You can come oh, as yeah, well, then. That's necessary, isn't it? Yeah, we've yeah, been warned, mate, three times. <laughs> So that's two in cuffs. In your pop. Anything sharp in your pockets? No. Nope. And attention can now turn back to the rider. So we're going to require you to provide a sample of saliva for a drugs test. Really because you're riding a motorbike, which is a motor vehicle on the road. OK. Yes. I've got to warn you, if you fail to provide a sample, or it proves to be positive, you may be arrested, OK? I'm, 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 not, I'm not being a dickhead about that. Huh? Well, no, but you're riding a bike round on the street, are you? So why are you expecting to be over? What? On a drug swipe. Probably. Okay. Yeah, well, then there'll be something else to contend with, won't it? The lad reckons he'll fail the wipe. Dad, you just stay over the in house. So, understandably, doesn't want his dad to see the results. Do uh, control just need a proper update, mate? Yeah, I'm just going to decide what we're going to do, do with him yet. Yeah. The results will only take eight minutes. Okay. Plenty of time for Dan to chew the fat. I Did you eight not count for around there? No, I had me wrong. Oh, I couldn't believe it. We're like, we're like, this is gold and he doesn't know we're here. So we followed you around. We couldn't believe when we saw you here. No, man, that was a bit dodgy. <laughs> we were like, we couldn't believe our luck. But one man's luck is another man's misfortune. And this lad knows the game's up. If this is well, he's only 17, he'll be all right. He's not going to get any time, zero. Positive, you're going to have to go to the police station. I've just admitted it. I've just admitted it, you know. Admitted what? me either way. I'm probably going to be over. What, on cannabis? Probably. OK. I take nothing else. Whatever the results of the test, the lad's mate is... Listen, I'm high. I'm definitely out of here. I am high. Still keen to help out in any way he can. By the way, just so he don't get in trouble. Uh, name check on the, the second one, mine. please. He claims the bike belongs to him. W Vran, I guess, right? NH66, uh, six, six. if I pass you a VIN number on this bike, can you run some checks on it, please? However, the rider's got no licence, no insurance, and the bike is far from roadworthy. So it's being seized. Mate, the moral of that story is it's cost everybody a bit of cash, hasn't it? How much you want to one of them worth? 500 quid? No, they're about five, six hundred pounds on them. Yeah. Because to get that back, it'd have to make it road legal, register it with the DVLA, number plates, get it through an MOT. I do all you're going to throw money at that to do that. You'll have 14 days to make that, make that happen. Dad, if you're watching, look away now. Just to make things even worse, mate, you're under arrest on suspicion of failing a roadside drug swipe. You've provided a positive sample for cannabis. He knew that, so you didn't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence not mention when questioned, some for which later on in court. He found a brand new I told you, I'm high. So, obviously, it's gone as a positive reading, reading for cannabis. It's we no knew great that. surprise to the lad, and he's off to Mansfield Nick. But seeing as he's just 17, he'll need a chaperone. So, have you got an older sister or parent? You can have a run to Mansfield, we'll bring him back. To come to Mansfield. Luckily for the lad, Dad's disappeared. Are you an older sister? Thank heavens for big sisters. His sister's coming with us to Mansfield. Yeah. She's just getting some shoes yeah, on. She's an adult. And thank goodness for backup.
Right, is it heavy? There's going to be a few of his lift, I think. Front end up. Who needs recovery when you've got an interceptor with a van? Yeah, it's not that heavy. My bike is like 600 pounds and it's a leader bike. So it's got to be like two something. All right, now you can sit it back and hold it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. The lad did a sample time? of blood back at Mansfield Nick and tested positive for cannabis. He was convicted of driving under the influence of drugs and without a license or insurance. He was disqualified for 12 months and had to pay an £80 fine. No time, $80. His mate was released that night without charge.